Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 3 this morning. Ephesians 1, 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. This morning I'd like to preach on the blessings of being in Christ. The blessings of being in Christ. And uh, if this message can't encourage you, well, I guess you're just unencourageable um, in my view. Uh, There's so many blessings about being in Christ. The phrase in Christ shows up 78 times in the Bible. Uh, it's something that was directed at the church after the cross and dispensations. When you get saved, you, all, you become in Christ. You're part of the body of Christ. You're inside Christ. And there's certain blessings that go along with that. And uh, those blessings, if we could learn to grab a hold of those blessings in life, uh, it would make this life look, you know, not so gloomy. You can go through things and still have a smile on your face. Uh, it gives the joy that passeth all understanding. Why? Because this life is just a passing. It's not something that is really supposed to grab a hold of us and control us. We're in Christ, and there's some great blessings in that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Lord, I pray that you'll... Wash me in your precious blood. I pray that you'll take and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray that this message will encourage those that are here and those that may hear it over the internet. I pray that uh, they will take and just be encouraged from it and be joyous in your salvation and in joyous in the fellowship that they have with you and the great many blessings that you've Put in our lives when we got saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To go with this, I'd like you to look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 14. It says, Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Now we're going to skip the first part of that and go to the second. <laughs> okay, if you're husband and wife, that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So you're in Christ Jesus. It says, Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Now there's blessings, but with those blessings should become a great, strong peace. And the Bible uh, talks about peace a lot. It says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, who trusteth in thee. A uh, perfect peace, that, you say, wow, that's perfect peace. The Bible talks about peace as being great peace. You have great peace. And peace that passeth all understanding. And this peace comes in Christ. Now, as the longer we live, we know that this world has its curveballs that causes peace to leave. But there should be a peace in your faith in Christ and your understanding about you being in Christ that should carry you through all the curveballs of this life. That underlying peace that's down rooted deep inside of you. And it may be turmoil on the surface. I'll grant when you go through some stuff, there's turmoil on the surface. But that peace should be down inside of you. There should be that peace. And that peace comes from understanding the blessings that are in Christ Jesus. Now, first of all, let's look at the first blessing. Now, I'm just going to number a few of them. And there's many. We could be here all week long talking about the blessings in Christ Jesus. I want to just point out some of the main ones. First of all, In Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Let's look at Romans 8, verse 1. When we're in Christ Jesus, we know that we have 
no condemnation. And knowing that we have no condemnation, let me tell you, that's a blessing. And that ought to bring us some great peace. Look at uh, Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. You know what's one of the greatest blessings of being in Christ is? I'm no longer condemned. Condemnation has no strength over me. I do not walk through life wondering if I'm condemned to hell. If I'm condemned to a life of death. I no longer am under the condemnation of sin. I'm free from that. That is a great blessing. Uh, you know why I got saved? Because I was scared of the condemnation of hell. I got saved at a young age, when I was six years old. But you know what drove me to desire to get saved? The fear of going to hell. That's condemnation. You know what some people have? They have a fear of condemnation. They have a fear of hell. And uh, that, uh, I'll tell you, if you're, if you're afraid you're going to go to hell, what kind of peace does that bring? I, I don't understand these Christians. They, they look at you and say, Salvation is a free man. You've got to take it up. Live a good life. You've got to take it up. Always worried about if they're going to lose it. I, I, I don't understand why they would choose that. When the Bible so clearly teaches it's a free gift and we get His righteousness. You sit there and argue with them. You know what they tell you? Those that really believe and are still trying to do They say, well, we no longer sin after we're saved. And the only thing I can figure is they take and make, uh, they have a very small view of what sin is. Very small view. And uh, for somebody to make that, I can't even fathom making that statement. Oh, I haven't sinned in the last 30 minutes, I guess. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's reality. But you know what? My sin, although I'm not going to glory in my sin, I'm not going to justify my sin, I'm not even going to feel good about my sin. I feel bad about it. When I catch it, it frustrates me. And I want it to get victory over it. I'm not justifying sin. But you know, when that sin comes in my life, I'm not sitting there saying, Oh, I wonder if I lost my salvation. I wonder if I'm going to die and go to hell now. Will, will the Lord forgive me of that sin? I already know He's forgiven. When it comes to condemnation, He's forgiven me of that sin. Now there's, I understand there's a condemnation of the flesh that all sin brings. Wages of sin is death. Okay? You, you know, if you could quit sinning, you wouldn't die. You know? I, I, I'll give you a good health plan. Don't ever sin again. If you pull that off, you're going to be good. <laughs> Wage of the sin is death. You know, <laughs> you might as well go get your insurance. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, but, uh, but that's, uh, so I'm not trying to justify or tell you to feel good in your sin. And that's sometimes us Baptist preachers that believe in eternal security, we're accused of that. Well, you Baptist preachers, you think you can just sin and get away with it and you're not going to go to hell? No, we don't believe we're going to sin and get away with it. Matter of fact, Baptist preachers have to preach on sin a lot more than others. Right. You know? And, uh, and, and, and we can name any sin. You know what? It doesn't bother me to say that the thought of foolishness is a sin. Why? Because I don't think the thought of foolishness is going to put me in hell. So I ain't worried about preaching about it. <laughs> you know? You know why they won't preach about it? Because they know they have all kinds of foolish thoughts. And if they say that's a sin, then they have to say they're a sin. They might be losing their salvation for the thoughts of foolishness. So they have to dumb it down. Well, I ain't never killed anybody. I ain't never committed adultery. So I'm not a sinner. What? <laughs> I mean, you know? 
You know what I'm saying? So they have this fear of condemnation. I don't have a fear of condemnation. Condemnation is taken care of. I'm in Christ. The Bible says there is no condemnation. John 5, 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my words and believeth upon him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, I get in Christ, I've already passed out of death. I've gone to life. You say, but you're physically going to die. But my soul will never die. And my physical death is just like a sleep. It's just only temporary. That body's going to come back up. And when it comes back up, it's going to be refreshed like it ain't never been refreshed. It's going to have a nice, long, good sleep. And it's going to be refreshed when it comes back up. It's going to be made new. I'm not worried about condemnation. You know, hell doesn't bother me anymore. No more do I worry about it. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. You're not condemned to hell anymore. Let me tell you, that is a blessing. That's a blessing that we can grab a hold of. Man, that ought to make you rejoice. You know, you know I, everything that this world has to offer, fine. You know, it's tough to get through it. But you know what? I know how it ends. And there's no condemnation for me. There's no condemnation. I have nothing to worry about. John chapter 3, we, we looked at this passage a little bit later in it, in Sunday school. But if you look at verse 7, start at 17... John chapter 3, verse 17 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. You, you, you know, uh, Jesus Christ didn't come with the desire to send people to hell. Matter of fact, that's never been God's desires. It says He's not willing that any should perish. He ha- it says He takes no pleasure in the death of of the wicked. It's never been his desire. It's never been his want. You know what Christ wants? He wants you to be in him with no out condemnation. That's what he wants. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You know why you're under condemnation? Because you don't want the light. You don't want Jesus Christ. You reject him. I didn't reject him. I accept him. And I stepped into Christ. And there's no longer no combination. You enjoy them pleasures of sin for a season? You think they're good enough to live in condemnation? You're going to reject Jesus Christ and the peace and the blessings of being in Him just to enjoy sin for a season? Every lost man's a fool when he rejects Jesus Christ. Why would you reject that? Why would you not want that? Why would you not want Jesus Christ and be free from condemnation? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't think I ever will get it. I don't get why anybody would not just be thrilled at hearing the gospel. That your sins could be forgiven, given eternal life, and God could take your sins on Him and give you His righteousness. I, I don't understand the atheist. I, I've dealt with them. Freedom from religion society. I'll tell you, there ain't a worse amount of unhappy, gloomy folks that I've ever met in my life. You know, they, they think that they've 
achieved the highest goal of humanity within themselves. I mean, I got to argue, and they're philosophers. They, they, they thought they were dealing with some country bumpkin, which they were, but, <laughs> but they thought I didn't know anything. And he sits there and quotes Socrates to me. Sister, one thing I know is I know nothing. I looked at that guy and said, at least we agree on something. You know nothing. I know I'm going to heaven. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I couldn't believe these guys. And I sit there and talk to them, talk to them. I said, I said, listen. I said, even if you're right, I'm better off than you are. He says, what do you mean? I said, because I have the joy and peace of knowing I'm going to heaven and serving Jesus Christ in righteousness, and you don't have that. You don't have that. I said, if I sin, what's it going to matter? If I'm wrong, what does it matter? I have a good life. And if you're right, how does it hurt me? I'll just die like a dog. Anyway, but at least I had a good life of peace. What do you got? What are you trying to offer me? They have nothing to offer me that I want. They have nothing. What does an atheist have to offer me? The pleasures of sin? Let me tell you, I've had enough sin in my life, I know it doesn't bring peace. That pleasure of sin has a price tag. That goes with it. And it's a price I'm not willing to pay. I'll tell you, the less sin I have in my life, and the more I serve Jesus Christ, the more joyous my life is. The more peaceful my life is. The more purposed my life is. I got something to live for. What do they got? They have nothing to offer me. There's nothing they can offer me that I want. You say, well, well, don't you wish you could take and do them sins? No. No. I don't. Even the ones that I fall into when, in moments of weakness, I wish I hadn't. I wish I hadn't. I like that boundary of not wanting to go after the sin. I like it. I like the fact that sin bothers me. I want to keep that. You know? I mean, I watch the way sin just destroys a family, destroys a character, destroys lives. You know, I've seen plenty of the destruction of sin. I don't want it. I don't want it. They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They're condemned. Why? Because they've rejected Jesus Christ. They don't want to be in Christ. Well, there's a blessing in Christ, and that is no condemnation. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And pick up verse 10. Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. It says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son... Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man by be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abound unto many." And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment, was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. 
You know, every man's condemned. Say, I'm not condemned to hell. God won't send me to hell. Every man's born in condemnation. You're born in condemnation. You're condemned to die. Now, if you don't have Jesus Christ, when you face God at the great white throne judgment, if you're not in Jesus Christ, if you love the pleasures of the sin, you will be condemned to hell. You say, do you like telling people that? No. What I do like telling people is there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. Not condemned anymore. Kind of leads us to the next problems. Not only am I not condemned to Jesus Christ, the next blessing I find is that I have eternal life in Christ. So not only am I not condemned, but I also won't be dead like a dog. So I don't have to worry about hell, but I can enjoy life for eternity. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. It's a promise of life in Christ Jesus. You say, what kind of life is that? That's eternal life. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I will endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Eternal you know, my life's eternal now. I'm in Christ Jesus. It's going to live forever. And thank God, not only will it live forever, it's going to live in perfection in eternity. It's going to live in perfection. So I have eternal life. You know what people try to do? They try to live long. That's what they try to do. They try to live long. You know what uh, every one of your goals your, you know what your basic goal in life is? To live longer without, with less pain. To live longer with less pain. That's what you want. You want to get everything out of life. And you want to live longer with less pain. You know, I wish I could take and live till I was 80 and run these mountains. I do. That's my goal. I want to keep my body in good enough shape where I can go out and run these mountains till I'm 80. You say, is that going to happen? No. <laughs> I can barely do it now. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but guess what I do have? I know that someday I'm going to get a new body. Yeah. And my life will go on way past 80. Way past 80. It's going to go on into eternity. And I'm going to have more pleasures than running these mountains. Amen. More pleasure than that. Uh, and I, I enjoy it. I mean, I took him out in the wind and the snow yesterday. We went deer hunting yesterday in the snow. Uh, the snow is beautiful. I love hunting in the snow. I enjoy it. Wore him out. And... Uh, I, I still got more spunk than he does. Now, he's getting old. Uh, he's going to his teenage years. I ain't going to be able to say that. But <laughs> I, mean, I can say it now. <laughs> You're like, Dad. I mean, he killed his deer. Dad, I, I had a tag. And I was like, let's try to get another one. I was just chopped liver to him. He was like, nope, we killed our deer. Let's go home. <laughs> you know, that, that's it. He's ready. He's done. But, uh, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy getting out there. I enjoy going out and enjoying nature. You know? And the goal is keep yourself in good enough shape where you can enjoy life. Do the things that you enjoy. Isn't that, don't you wish you could still go skiing? I went skiing a few times when I was younger. That's a lot of fun. I don't dare get on skis now. I don't dare. You know? Don't you wish you could go sledding? And that kid says, why don't you ever go sledding? Because every bump I hit puts a pain in that back. I, I don't dare go sledding. Not on purpose I ain't going to do that. 
huh? I may slip and go down on accident, but I ain't going to do it on purpose. Man, when we were kids, we'd go down them hills in Tennessee. There'd be a pathway. You'd be dodging them oak and maple trees. Sometimes we'd hit them jokers. We must have been doing 20 miles an hour. Splat! Against that tree, and we'd just get up and go do it again. <laughs> like, my world. We were kids. I was telling my, he said, did y'all have sled routes? I said, yeah, we had one where we had to jump off the sled because at the bottom was a creek. <laughs> So we'd jump off the sled, hit some tree, or do something so we wouldn't go in the creek. <laughs> and we, we had uh, various sled routes that we would go down. But I, I remember taking a, we'd take a car hood, tie it to a four-wheeler, pile up on it. You know how stupid that is? Man, you get hit with that car hood, that's going to take your head off. We just figured we'd fall behind it. Man, we did some crazy things. But uh, did you know we did that? <laughs> so, I, 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 sometimes I say stuff and she's like, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> you know? uh, but, uh, you know, I don't dare do that stuff anymore. You know why? Because the older I get, the less I can handle. You can't, you can't have fun like you did as a kid. You don't bounce back. You don't bounce back. One of these days I'm going to have a life that's eternal and I don't have to worry about killing myself. I'll be like a teenager again. Teenagers never worry about killing themselves. <laughs> Why? How do you know? Because everything they do can pretty much end with death. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, Bible says in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, it says, This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know, one of the greatest blessings about being a saint is to know I have eternal life in Jesus Christ. My life's eternal. It's everlasting. I don't have to worry about death. Death is a terrible thing. It's a sorrowful thing. It's a hard thing to watch and love ones. It's a hard thing to approach None of us want to die. None of us desire it. None of us look forward to it. There is a natural tendency to resist death. But death has no power over me. And it's something that I don't have to worry. I cannot imagine living a life worried about everything that can cause death. I, I can't, you know, the world's scared to death of COVID-19. It's nasty. I'll grant it. It's not good. I can't live a life scared of it. I just can't. You know, uh, are you worried about the grizzly bear? No, especially not now. Any bear with good sense is going to crawl in a hole. <laughs> I mean, it's too cold. But am I worried about it? No, I'm not worried about it. I'm more worried about Black Lives Matter members than I am grizzly bears. Grizzly bears have more character. <laughs> Probably more morals. You know? I'm not worried about that. You worried about snakes? Only when they're under my feet. I'm not going to worry about them. You worry about crashing your car and dying? If I was, I'd never get behind a wheel. Are you worried about the plane crashing? No. Not worried about. Are you worried about the mugger down the dark alley? No. I take precautions. I don't go looking for it. But I'm not going to live in fear of it. Why? Because if I die, I have eternal life. Now, do you understand that? No. If I die, I have eternal life. 
You know the biggest fear I have of death right now? Is leaving them. That's my biggest fear. Right now. But even with that, I know the God that took care of me can take care of them. Amen. Amen. You can't fear death. Don't live in a life of fear. The Bible says in John chapter 10, and this is a great comfort, John chapter 10, verse 27, says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You know, I'm in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in God the Father's hands. I am the most protected man that there can be. I couldn't get a better protection. You know, in a war zone, I couldn't find a better protection. I can't find a better protection out on these mountains, out on these roads. No matter what country I'm in, I'm in the Father's hands, and I'm in the Son's hands. You know, what better place could you be? The place of security. I'm secure. I have the best security there is. I mean, what what do I have to worry about? I'm not condoning going out, living like a fool, saying death won't happen. The Bible says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen? If Jesus Christ won't cast himself off a pinnacle on the temple, why do you think you should? Alright? So I'm not telling you to go looking for trouble or looking for pain. You might find it if you go look. Actually, if you go looking for it, you will find it. <laughs> I mean, you go looking for something, you find it. Use your God-given common sense. But you don't have to live in fear of death. You're secure. You're secure. That's a great blessing. That's a great comfort. Don't you know that's a great comfort? That's a great blessing. I have eternal security. Uh, I, I don't know... Why somebody would reject eternal security? I mean, what, what do these guys think that it means when it says that you have eternal life or everlasting life? How do they interpret them two words? You know, that, that's what settled me on eternal security when I was a kid. It was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know what dawned on me as a kid? I was like, well, it says everlasting. That means it never ends. And it was settled. You know, I wish everybody could get eternal security that easy. You know, sometimes we all think like a child. You know? I haven't worried about my salvation since. I haven't worried about my salvation since I was six years old. Never bothered me a bit. Why? Because I'm secure. And I know I'm trusting in Him and not myself. Eternal security. It's a great blessing. We have the promise of eternal life. Next thing I see is also a great blessing is we have a new start in Christ. We have a place of a new start. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Have you ever looked at your life and say, You know what? That's a mess. That is just an absolute mess. I want to restart. Guess what? With Christ, you can restart. There's a restart in Christ. You know, every time you get down on your knees and you say, Lord, wash it clean. It's a restart. It's a restart. Don't you want a restart? 
You know, I, I see people going through and their conscience has beat them up about their past. And they live in the past and they cannot forgive themselves of the past and they can't let go of their past and the problems of the past. And if you dwell on the problems of the past, it will wear you out. It'll put you in the it'll put you in sorrow. Because there's plenty of mistakes you've made in your past. And I don't care who I'm talking to. Every one of us has those. Where was my mistakes in the past? You can find all kinds. You can find regrets in your past. I mean, those are easy to find. But in Christ, we're a new creature. Old things are passed away. You say, what about that sin last week? That sin was last week. Put it under the blood, start new. What about the life before I got saved? Well, that was the old creature. That was the old name. You ain't even the same guy anymore. Put that under the blood. You're not even the same person. And, and you know what? We shouldn't be the same person of the past. We ought to be a new creature. New creature. Say, I don't like the way things are going. Well, why don't you restart? Get down on your hands and knees and say, Lord, I need to restart. I need to start again. Messed it up so far. Let, let me start afresh. Let me start new. You know, there's always that opportunity with the Christian. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. The Lord said, all right, let's put that part under the blood and let's, let's start anew. Let's get this thing going right again. You can do that as a Christian. You know, if you're not in Christ, you don't have that opportunity. You bear your burdens. Uh, the Bible says, Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what people do that are not in Christ? They carry the burden of the past. My burden in the past the Lord. The only burden I have is the things that He requires of me and that's a light burden compared to the sins of my past. Amen. That's a light burden. We have a new start. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 through 16 it says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them and mercy upon the Israel of God. So if you walk on in this rule that you're a new creature, the old things are past. All things are become new. If you walk in this rule, you're going to have peace. Why? Because you know what brings lack of peace? The torment of what you did in the past. That thing has torment. The mistakes of the past. You know, and, and we all have. Them. We have. Them. And uh, I'll tell you, I mean, when I start thinking about my past, there's things I wish I'd done different. There's things I wish I'd done different. And they, they're not near as bad as most lost people have. But there's still things I wish I'd done different. And you know what I have to do with that? I have to take it and say, Lord, that's yours. I'll get my head forward going forward for you as a new creature serving you. All things become new. Number uh, four is the great spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Our text said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now when we start thinking about the future blessings of, in heavenly places, you know, it talks about pleasure forevermore. A mansion. 
city of New Jerusalem, the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, a glorified body. Man, I got some things in heaven waiting for me in Christ, some great blessings. And those things should make you rejoice. You got something to look forward to. You say, who has them? Every Christian in Christ has those things. You say, well, I may not have a reign with Christ because I didn't serve. Yeah, but you still have an inheritance. You know there's a difference between an inheritance and a reign and a reward. We should seek to earn rewards, but, but we still have the blessing of our inheritance because we are in Christ. You know, that pleasure forevermore, uh, when we get up into a certain time in history, God's going to wipe away all tears from our eyes. He's going to give us pleasure forevermore. He's going to give us a mind like Him. You say, who? Every single Christian that's in Christ Jesus. And you're not in Christ Jesus unless you're a true Christian. Everyone that's accepted Jesus Christ has those promises given to them that they can claim. Say, I really messed up my life. All right, well, God will fix it in heaven. Amen? That's a blessing. That's a great blessing. We have blessings that is beyond our imagination in heavenly places. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, it says, He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. His exceeding riches in the ages to come. You know, we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg yet. Can you imagine that? You know, I, I would never... I would not rather have any other life than the Christian life serving Jesus Christ and in love with Him on this earth. But it ain't even touching the iceberg of what He has planned in store for me. You know, what, what, what's coming is so much better than anything I can imagine on this earth. Exceeding riches, exceeding blessings, exceeding kindness beyond all measure. More grace and kindness and love than I can ever imagine. You know, I'm looking forward to marrying my fiance. She's a lovely woman. She is one of the kindest women I've ever met. I'm looking forward to that. I look forward to it. And I'm desirous of that. And I think it will be a pleasant and a good love. And I look forward to having that in my life again. Now, I'm not taken away from Rebecca because I had it. I had a great one. Now, I'm looking forward to having that again. And it'll be different. I know that. It'll be very different. I look forward to that. But you know what? As much as I look forward to that, that ain't nothing compared to what I look forward to in heaven. It ain't nothing compared to that. Why? Well, you ladies might be a lot more sweeter than us men, but you're not perfect. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. You're not perfect. I know Simone ain't perfect. I know we'll have our disagreements. I know we'll have our trouble and stuff. But I still look forward to it. Amen? I still look forward to that. Boy, when I get to heaven though, with Jesus Christ, it's going to be far beyond any marriage relationship you can imagine on this earth. Far past that. And you say, what is marriage? It's an imagined relationship. Amen. And it's what you make out of it when you hit the reality of it. Marriage is a wonderful thing. 
And you should always make it a wonderful thing. One of these days I'm going to be married to Christ. I'm going to have a pure love that has no flaws. And that love will be gone all measure. Which brings me to the last part of my message. The blessings in Christ is a love in Christ. Is a true love. A pure love. A love that goes beyond all measure. A love that is unimaginable for us. Our love on this earth is somewhat selfish. Amen. All marriage has two selfish parties trying to get what they can out of the marriage. That's a reality. No husband is completely unselfish. And no wife is completely unselfish. Because you don't know how to be. It's not in your nature to be completely unselfish. Now, the more unselfish we are, the more pleasant the marriage becomes. Amen? But, I, I mean, let, let's look at the reality of it. Most problems in a marriage is due to selfishness on both parts. Okay? That is a reality. And uh, the more unselfish love you give, the more pleasant your marriage is. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a marriage that's completely unselfish. Completely unselfish. And I already have a love in Christ. His love is unselfish. It's an unselfish love. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, things present, nor things come, nor to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a great love. That's a great love. And every one of us all look forward to having that love. The Bible says, But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to, to walk as he walked. You know, he has shown us a perfect love. And to make that union in Christ more pleasant on this earth, we ought to learn to love him the way he's loved us. And that's a good principle to have in a marriage. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. Amen? And uh, that's uh, something we have to look forward to. Now let me ask you, do you have these blessings that are in Christ? Do you have the peace of no condemnation? Do you have the security of e eternal security? Do you have the desire to look forward to eternal blessings? in heavenly places? Do you have the satisfaction of a pure love? Do you have the joy that comes with having a new start? You know, when you think about these things, these blessings that we have in Christ Jesus, it should make us Look at it and say, you know what? This life, it doesn't matter what it brings on. I got peace in Christ Jesus. I got peace. It doesn't matter what the election results are. I have peace in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how this earthly marriage turns out. I got peace in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what my kids do or don't do. I got peace in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what the boss does. I have peace in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter how the body falls apart. 
I got peace in Christ Jesus. Peace that passes all understanding. Do you have that? Do you take satisfaction in that? Do you take and cling on to that? And I can name many more blessings of being in Christ Jesus. Being justified, being sanctified, being uh, our redemption in Christ Jesus. Our, uh, our, the provisions that are in Christ Jesus. The knowing that He'll take care of us when you have that in Christ Jesus. Being in His hand, being in His control, being in His watchful eye, being in His presence, never being alone. All those are benefits of being in Christ Jesus. But we all take and meditate on these things and always have them in the back of our mind as we go through life saying, I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm in Him. And I have all those blessings, those rich blessings that go along with that. And that ought to be part of our life. All right, let's, uh, let's have a uh, song of invitation.